Hi, my name is John Allen. I'm a senior product manager here at Nice High Security. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Our topic this morning is the uh, Wedge Smart DC, which is um, a wedge plate and barrier arm combination. And with me today to discuss this is my very good friend and probably the most knowledgeable person in our company about this product, uh, Mr. Jeremy Grummels. Without further ado, then, I'd like to turn things over to Jeremy. So I want to go over uh, High Security's Wedge Smart, some of the features of it, some things that make it distinctively high security, and some of how it works, what might be interesting to your end users or your customers uh, about this particular product. So this is a couple of different places you might find these, rental car facilities, long-term parking, corporate campus, campuses. I've seen these on um, college dormitories where they got frustrated with people running through them and breaking the arm. I think we have one on legislative building for parking for senators and congressmen. Just about anywhere that maybe they don't need some of our heavier security equipment, but they definitely want to limit the traffic or give that, you know, imposing barrier kind of feel to what the what they're doing there. So it's a more simple install too than, than some of the other ones, but we'll cover some of that here in a little bit too. So again, See these in many places, a lot of places like uh, again, car rental facilities, revenue control parking, anywhere that they want to secure vehicles. Uh, a lot of the car rental agencies will use them not just for shuttle bus entrances, but uh, in place of tire shredders and, and those types of materials. Again, neat thing about it is the integrated arm that works with it, just like our normal spark barrier, which I'm sure that a lot of you have seen before. So that gives it the the different kinds of counts. You can have tenant counts, transient counts, all those things. So you can monitor those and, and pay attention to different kinds of traffic. So if you want to separate the shuttle buses from the rental cars going in and out, you have different contacts available to look at that kind of thing. And much like our other barriers, it uses our high net and HY5Bs and plenty of relay outputs for guards and different security or flashing lights, buzzers, anything like that. So again, the kind of the trick to this, uh, what makes it neat is it's two barriers in one. Uh, obviously, I'm sure a lot of you've seen the, you know, the tire shredders with maybe a different brand of barrier arm in front of it. This is an integrated system. So all of that kind of works in conjunction with each other, the arm and the wedge plate itself making it a more interactive system on your side and allowing you a lot more control. So as the plate goes down, reaches the bottom, the arm goes up, then the arm comes down, the plate goes up. That way you've got something more visual, that plate obviously being you know, down in front, that barrier makes it a more visible to cars passing through, so they, they're waiting for the wedge to, to hit the ground. As with all of our stuff, it's a lot of industrial grade components. It's another neat thing about the, the way this functions too, is the fact that uh, it's not powered in the down position. It's, it's basically resting. A lot of the barriers out there in, in this market segment are powered when they're in a down position so that it works less hard to pull it up. This doesn't have to do that. This is, this is resting when it's in the down position. So it's not under power all the time, making it low, lower maintenance and uh, giving it a longer life. So let me run a little video here so that everybody can see the, how it kind of looks in person. I'm going to turn the sound down a little bit on that. Sorry about that. Clicked in the wrong spot. So this is one of the first ones we put in. It's got a, it's a, a little different look than uh, now with the, with the newer ones than it was with these originally, but the operation is basically the same. Nice smooth operation of the wedge. Our same, you know, strong arm park barrier that goes up and down in a, in a standalone strong arm park is, is the arm itself on this one. And then the wedge plate comes out. So this this was one of our beta sites, right, Jeremy? That's correct. This is a beta site, I think, at SeaTac, right there in Seattle, not that or <laughs> at SeaTac, not that far from from our office. So uh, crash rating. This is a an engineered rating of SC40, which is small car 
2,430 pounds at 40 miles an hour, a full size sedan at 4,630 pounds at 30 miles an hour. A lot of times, again, um, if you're just looking for the intimidation factor of having that kind of a barrier out there, which is the reason why some places are interested in these, the rating doesn't necessarily matter as much. And in that case, one of the nice things about this as well is that it's a surface mount. But if you need that engineered rating, there are some foundational things you can do that are pretty minor and you'll get, you'll achieve those ratings. And those are pretty good ratings for a barrier in this segment. Pretty good and pretty standard. Let me go up to the next slide, Jeremy. I just wanted to ask you about, what's the deal with the blue car here and the wedge facing the way it's facing? That would be a car exiting. In, in, this, in this application, the way these are run, both of these wedge plates are up to protect someone from entering, well, or protects a vehicle from exiting, I, I should say, so it doesn't get stolen. Typically, you're not concerned about a car traveling this way. If, if this were a rental car facility, for example, one of the things that uh, thieves are doing now is they'll grab a, a Suburban or an SUV or something like that, try to run through this way, whether it's the entrance or the exit, and then they'll follow out that same direction with five or six other vehicles. So in this case, if this were a rental car facility and there were a bunch of vehicles inside here that they were trying to keep from leaving, this is the correct direction because you don't want pe people to charge this exit lane or this entry lane and use it as an exit. So you're using the barrier arm to control the traffic flowing in the opposite direction of the wedge plate. That's correct. So this, this, you know, bluish purple car is, is still watching this arm, still has this as a visual cue that the wedge plate is up or down, but it's keeping vehicles from exiting, basically, keeping people from stealing vehicles. And really that's, that's fairly typical. You'll see the wedge plates facing both in the same direction most, uh, most of the time on these. And, and again, the reason for that being is either to keep vehicles from entering regardless of the lane or exiting regardless of the lane. Even our larger wedges, the SAM 50s, you'll see that same thing. On an exit, the, uh, it'll look like a ramp. So again, neat things about this, the integrated traffic light, uh, some of these, some of the things in this market segment, some of the barriers in this market segment have a light that stands off to the side or you'd have to order it separately. We're trying to provide you with an entire system here. So it's, it's nice in that way. And because just like John and I were just talking about, you may want to run vehicles in both directions or prevent vehicles from driving in in both directions. You've got a light that you can do on both sides. So bumper pad on the, on the bottom of the arm, the bumpers on the bottom of the wedge itself are actually kind of like sound deadening. They work really well for that. This thing is fairly silent operating. If you've ever been around some of the bigger wedges, you can hear them. They, yeah, they clank you know, when they close, right? Right, they clank, they ka-chunk, they make big old noises because, well, they're big old wedges. These plates are, are relatively heavy. And for, for what it is and what it does, this barrier is relatively quiet. That's one of the reasons for this padding. It also allows for if there were a minor amount of dirt or debris of any kind underneath of there, it, it allows it to kind of work around it because the plate itself doesn't have to lay 100% flat. It's got, it's got a bit of a crown in it. Correct. And that crown actually makes the wedge itself more rigid, but again, allows for minor amounts of debris underneath, which is nice because one of the things that you get in a lot of these plates that have to come down flat is, you know, I've talked to a lot of maintenance departments and they're, they say that one of the bigger hassles is just keeping it clean underneath so that it functions without error. The red on the top side is more of like a grip tape, like you'd find on a skateboard or something like that, but it's reflective. So it's just something to keep from slipping. So move to the next one. Also huge features in this thing. We've got a, an arm only mode. So when I talked about some of the barriers that have to be under power all the time, that's not super handy if you have to power the wedge down for let's say an hour while everybody's taking a lunch break and they're trying to dump everybody out of the parking lot so that they can go grab lunch. It's not awesome to have the wedge under power that entire time. So it, it cycles nice. faster when you have it in arm only mode? Yes, so it'll also cycle much faster, right? Because you're just waiting for the barrier arm itself. Super handy in that way as well. The articulating arms, 
again, parking garages or anything like that where you've got low ceiling clearance, that's super handy. Also available in our strong arm park model. Again, mostly anything that's in the strong arm park, you will kind of find in this because of the integration of the two. Integrated battery backup. Uh, this is nice because we get several cycles after power loss on this. Obviously, just like anything else, it depends on the amount of uh, accessories, peripheral devices that you have on this, but we're saying up to 150 cycles after AC power loss. So super handy if you're trying to get a few cars in or out and there's some power issue. Is that standard or is that an option? The battery backup is standard on these, just like all of our other electromechanical machines. They're all DC, they all are DC powered. So this uh, battery mount kit that it talks about here is actually just because there's two different panels and you may want to have it moved to a different portion of the machine. Zinc over powder coat, just like a lot of our other stuff. So long wear life on these without rusting. There is, uh, I'm sure you've heard this joke before, John, but uh, people talk about the uh, pre-rusted for your convenience. Oh, so yeah. in the in the crash market that 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 a lot of times is pretty standard especially when you're putting things down against the concrete all the time and these have a pretty good tolerance for you know the salt and the water and and everything else that gets on the ground i mentioned before the surface mount installation which again if, if the customer is not needing the crash rating then you know it's it's a simple bolt down to where it's at otherwise there's there's a there is a shallow foundation and when we say shallow, we mean shallow. This is, it's 11 inches under the chassis, seven inches under the wedge, which is some of the smaller footprints in the industry. There is an anchor template that's provided so that it's easy to bolt this thing down. You drill the holes and set the bolts in epoxy. Again, making it pretty easy. You don't have to have them all perfectly lined up to set all this stuff down on it. So the strap attaches to the chain on this. This is a similar strap to our uh, M50s and M30s, but just much smaller, obviously. And that's where you get the retention of the wedge when, when it's impacted. That's what keeps it from just flipping over the top when it's struck. Correct. And we say that, you know, if it impacted less than 10 miles an hour, uh, it won't damage the chassis. I've actually seen some of them that are struck and are reusable. Again, uh, we're never suggesting that you would take and run into one of these and then reuse it if it's, you know, some sort of critical infrastructure or something like that where they need that crash rating. Uh, you certainly want to talk to the customer about any kind of strike and whether or not you feel it's prudent to reuse it. There's always a danger of something having happened if it's been hit, uh, hit hard enough in those kinds of situations. So one of the greatest things as far as I'm concerned that we did with this, you know, we had to do something different where we were running two different motors and, and two different barriers really within one. And rather than develop an all new board that would run both of these, we have, and I'm sure some of you have heard me say it before, we, I work with some of the smartest engineers on the planet. It was really ingenious. They just used two of our smart DC boards and tied them together so that this is the same board that you guys would find in any of our other equipment. Again, like the strong arm park or a slide smart or a swing smart. The board has, the board is absolutely no different. We're just making them we're, we're using the 485 communication to talk between the two of them so that it kind of functions like when you tie two independent barriers together. And again, saving you guys on having to come up with a whole other board if you start, if you put in a couple of wedges. Oh, we better keep this new board in stock. No, it's the same board you guys have been using. So it makes it super simple for you in that way. Uh, same HY5Bs that we, that we run. Again, we talked about that earlier. This is high net capable. So a lot of secure facilities, a lot of government type things are now using the high net to tie in for communication. So they can monitor it at, at all times. They can, you know, you can get e emails about uh, errors or anything like that. Again, secure locations, especially at a distance, they're usually very interested in keeping a close eye on these things. So not only could you with our high net, I'm sure you're aware, but you can land an IP addressable camera on it, but you can also monitor this gate in, uh, in real time. HY5Bs, we mentioned those. For those of you that don't know about uh, the advantage of the HY5B over the HY5A, this is really an enhanced detector, even over our previous generation. It's uh, 
but detection is much better. We can more or less see one car right behind the other. So we have a very good ability to read the separation of vehicles. And you can kind of see over here in these graphs on the side what that kind of looks like. We don't, we don't have to, you know, like tailgating is easier to pick up on this, okay? We also built in, uh, you know, some enhanced grounding on it. There's a ground right on the, on the HY5B itself. You've got more loop diagnostics. The, you know, improved ability to read between vehicles helps with closer counts. Just a lot of advantages to running the HY5B. And as it mentions up here, it has a motorcycle mode. Believe it or not, there's a group, a uh, federal group that has adopted that <laughs> as being a standard. They want all their barriers set in motorcycle mode because of uh, some government folks that ride motorcycles to work. So HiNet kind of mentioned that briefly a minute ago. This gives you the remote control, remote ma management, remote diagnostics, and uh, it allows you to email yourself or remote into that device to maybe see what is going on with it in advance to having to actually you know, show up, check it, find out what's going on, and then come back to it later. So it's start software remotely, basically, if you will. And it looks a lot like this. These are so, actually screenshots from the web interface, right? Yes, this is from the web interface. And as you can see, this one, well, this is our original beta, beta um, M30 that was on the yard at, at High Security. So you can see the, <laughs> it's got the candy stripe pole in it. But yeah, you can tie in several cameras, you can, uh, remotely monitor up to four gates, super handy stuff. And check your cycle counts, all that other stuff. And this even allows, kind of like our new Connects models, this allows you to sort your events as well. So you can sort by alerts, and events, and faults if you're looking for something in particular. We could do a whole webinar on HiNet. There's a lot of capabilities built into it. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's part of my problem. I, I'm like, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to spend the entire time on the HiNet. So it, it is really neat. I, I, I've always been a big proponent of the high net itself. So wedge plate versus spikes. Again, this is a, a little less passive. Uh, spikes are, I, I've had a lot of people tell me that they get damaged easily, basically, because they'll fold over in different directions. They get debris in them and everything else. Where ours is an active system, you can clean it with maintenance pretty easily. You don't have to worry about it getting bent because you're not folding or running over it in a up position or anything like that. And frankly, I've had customers tell me that, you know, they'll either throw plywood down on it or some other structure down on the tire spikes and run right over it. So they're just not as um, robust as a wedge that's up. You, it's much harder to get but around. That thieves will just go ahead and sacrifice the tires of a car. Let's go ahead and rip them to shreds and, keep going and not that that's, big of a deterrent. That's the other thing, right? So, you know, you look at uh, like all the new Suburbans and Corvettes and everything else, what kind of tires do they come with? Run flats. So is it a huge deal to have flat tires on those? Not really. I mean, they can still go 50 miles an hour and get away. It's, it's certainly a, I, you know, I think they had their time at one point, but uh, there's there's a lot better systems out there now. Any qu questions really on this, John? Did we, have we missed anything? What class rating are these? Are these class two? I'm, I've seen them in class two situations. I'm not aware of any reason why you couldn't put them in a class two. Um, the only thing they've done in, that I've seen on these in those types of situations is uh, you know, photo-wise and that sort of thing. Because just like anything else, you need to protect entrapment zones. I have a question. Yes, sir. Max load capacity for the wedge plate. I don't remember the exact number for sure right this second, but I do know that we did verify that the rental car facility could run their transport vehicles over it, which, you know, are loaded with several cars, basically the equivalent of a semi. So, so yeah, it, it, it's fairly high, but I don't remember what it is exactly. Uh, we were discussing earlier this week about the uh, breakaway mount for the arm and the kill switch on there. And 
whether or not you really need a feature like, like that on a wedge and how you would use it and when you would or would not use those features. So the kill switch on the arm is basically to protect the arm from flopping around, you know, if you've got a guard booth or something like that, you don't want it flopping around and hitting the booth and you know, destroying things around it. So the advantage to having kill switch on the arm is basically just that flopping of the arm itself, if that makes sense. Once it's been, if the arm's been run through, if it's, especially if it's come from the other direction, uh, you know, maybe they kind of sl slightly drove off an open, a partially open wedge. It's not maybe going to damage it from that side, but it would take out the arm. And then you don't want the arm, like I said, flopping around and hitting, you know, opposing traffic or something like that because it's still in operation. So if you were, if you had the wedge plate down during a period of high traffic and you're just running the arm to control traffic flow in and out of a parking facility, breakaway bracket sounds like it might, might have some advantage there. If somebody gets impatient and runs into the arm and the bracket breaks away, the arm swings away and the machine stops running. But if you're running the wedge plate, you'll probably never get that far to, to um, break the arm away. And the arm only breaks away in one direction, right? Right. And they, they would have to be either running with the wedge plate down almost or, or, uh, or it'd be almost down when they drove from the secure side to break it away, but even in those cases, it's going to be super handy to not have it flopping around and hitting something and further damaging other components or anything like that. Otherwise, you're correct, especially if you're coming from the public side towards it. Contact with the arm is probably going to be pretty minimal, and as you can see in the picture here, it's the opposite direction of the way it's going to break away. Yeah, so if in the picture here, the arm would break away and swing towards the observer and with the camera in that picture. Yeah, yeah. So coming from the public side or from the, yeah, the public side, it's going to stay in place regardless, basically. So if they were trying to run through the wedge and everything else, at that point, you're not, you don't really care about a disabled arm. Um, another question. Mm -hmm. The traffic light function like a street light and change color? Or uh, does it just turn on when the arm is up and down when the plate is down? Good question. I don't believe I mentioned that. It goes from uh, red to green. So it does function like a street light. I'm glad you asked me. I don't, I don't think I said it. How hard is it to replace the, um, the wedge plate after a crash? So the wedge plate itself is not that difficult to replace. The great thing about the construction of it and the way, we've, the way it was designed is the wedge itself kind of stands alone. So if it is damaged, it's not overly difficult to replace. You have, uh, you would have that that strap that we talked about inside that may have given the wedge it plate itself may uh, may be bent. Those are going to be your biggest replacement items, and and both of those are are fairly reasonable to replace. So, um, would you ever need to replace the whole machine? You could. Um, you know, I kind of talked about earlier how it's surface mount. So if you are replacing the whole machine, even if you had a bunch of bent, bent bolts and everything else, it wouldn't be that difficult to replace it. And and it's modular in a sense. I just previously mentioned the uh, wedge plate being separate. It's not horrible install. I mean, I've seen some of these things that were like these giant monolithic structures or whatever. And, and this is because it's modular, it's much easier to replace and install. So the, the 10 mile an hour crash rating without damage to the chassis, if somebody bumps into it accidentally, it's probably not going to damage the chassis. But I think if, if somebody's trying to crash through it, then probably have to replace the whole machine. I would certainly check everything over regardless. I mean, we, we say that and that should be accurate in most cases, but that's not like a guarantee because if you struck it just right or, or something like that, I mean, you're certainly going to want to check everything over and make sure that nothing's bent and or broken or anything like that. But yes, you know, if it's a uh, smaller vehicle and they hit it fairly squarely and those types of things, then it should be fine. So what is the speed when of the arm alone when you're using it without the wedge and what's the speed when you're using it with the wedge? So our, the arm is the, basically the equivalent of strong arm part 10, which is a, uh, up to a second and a half open, second and a half closed. And then the plate itself is about three seconds. So overall speed is about five. So if you're talking about uh, both barriers, 
it's it's about five seconds, but the arm should, you know, is going to be second and a half, two and a half seconds. The arm won't start moving until the plate is all the way down. So if the arm is closed and the plate is closed, then the arm stays in position until the plate is all the way down so that you're not driving over a wedge that's part way up, right? Correct. You get, a, you know, a combined time, if you will. The, uh, the arm's second and a half or two seconds plus the three seconds for the wedge itself. So if the, if the power is out and the batteries are dead, uh, can you operate the wedge manually? You can. There's a hand crank towards the back of the buttress where you can manually run it up and down. And I guess that's the other point that I'm not sure if I mentioned or not, because you can order it in right hand and left hand buttresses. You can determine the placement, you know, whether you want them both in the island or both on the outside or however you end up doing that. But yeah, you can, with a, with a hand crank, basically you can run the wedge plate down. And it's not terribly long. I'm, I've run one down myself. I, I want to say it's roughly uh, a minute or so to get the uh, barrier down. So it's not, it's not too bad. And our strong arm park, as many of you know, if you kill the power to it a hundred percent, you can just lift it with your hand. So even if it's in the down position, the arm is super easy. And then the wedge plate, you just run with the uh, hand crank. Okay. Last question. In the case that an obstacle is above the plate, is there some kind of protection? If there's a, a car over the band, what keeps the wedge from lifting up underneath the car? Just like the rest of our electromechanical stuff, there is an IES built in at both directions. Now, I, I, I would not stick my unsteel-toed foot underneath of it just to test it, but it does have a, a an IES built into it so that it will reverse. What, what is IES? Uh, our inherent entrapment sensor. So it measures the amperage uh, draw of the motor so that it knows if it's, if it's contact and an obstruction. Same setup as a slide smart, swing smart, um, any of our Connects models, uh, Stronger Park, they all have that same type of IES. So it will detect a collision with an obstruction? And, Correct. And then what does it do? Does it just stop or? It does. It stops, it beeps. Um, I think you can set it to full reverse, but I don't think it will otherwise. So full reverse is an, an optional setting? I think it'll back up for one second. Otherwise, you can do a full reverse, I think, as well. The idea being that if, you know, it's your hand or something like that that's in there, it will back up just enough for you to pull your hand free. All right. Well, that's about it for our time on this. I wanted to just say deep gratitude to Jeremy for discussion about this, and I totally appreciate your expertise on this product. If you have any questions or anything else comes up, we're always here and available. You can reach us through our support site, which has a lot of great resources that support that highsecurity.com, or um, you can reach us through our website at highsecurity.com. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much and appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, John.